uh, today we will uh, have a talk in English, uh, and so uh, you get an option uh, to look at, at the uh, presentation on our site. You can uh, download it right now if you like, and uh, uh, so uh, we will uh, uh, get. Uh, the talk in English, and we will ask the questions as well as English this time. And after uh, the talk, yes, it will be a session for the questions and for comments. Uh, and now uh, we'll start from a short information uh, block, uh, which I would like to introduce a bit uh, why we have such a complicated topic today. Uh, the idea of the talk as you uh, might already read uh, in the literature and in uh, the uh, submission of uh, Dr. Abrama, is to discuss the option for the fields to correlate faster than light. So we have the restriction in a special relativity only for particles not to move faster than light. This uh, restriction is not for fields, and it's very common in quantum mechanics, where we used to accept the reduction uh, of the wave function, which is in fields distribution, distribution of matter with uh, superliminal uh, speeds. So it's uh, quite natural for quantum physics. We are all used to uh, to accept it. Uh, but we very, very rarely talk about the same phenomenon in classical uh, field theory because we believe that all the classical uh, objects should obey uh, the uh, relativity theory. Actually, it's not true. Only particles or objects or just integrals of energy should obey uh, the restrictions that they don't move faster than light. Uh, you can't replace from one point to another the integral of energy or the particle. The difference between particles that fields and fields that fields are densities. Densities might be correlated with superliminal uh, speeds, and all condensed matter physicists do know about this. We are uh, uh, tested it many times in our uh, non local organization of densities in superfluid. Superfluids and uh, in superconductors. We have speed devices which work on this phenomenon, instantaneous uh, distribution and correlations of densities. And so uh, the very same in nature is for fields in uh, Maxwell electrodynamics. Again, just only for fields, not for uh, electrons or for, for the particles of the charge. But you have to understand that charge is an integral object. It means the charge is the, the particle. It's different from the field. Uh, so field, it's always distribution. And what we will talk today, if you look at the literature, uh, that uh, it might be a thought experiment, which uh, uh, Dr. Abrama made for us, and he will uh, talk about it, that fields might be correlated instantaneously over the world. This is the idea of the talk, and I would like that everyone accepted this uh, possibility uh, for the classical electrodynamics, first of all, just only for fields. Anyway, uh, everyone could uh, uh, say a few words about uh, his opinion uh, to the talk, and uh, especially for the experiments, both the thought experiment we will hear today, and for the experiments in Frascati, which uh, Dr. Abram will talk us about. So it's all very serious measurements behind the talk today, and therefore I decided that uh, we should be also involved because uh, non-locality is our topic. It widely discussed at our seminar, and so we will uh, discuss non-locality of a field densities in the future. Sometimes we simply talk non-locality of matter or non-locality of the wave function, 
but what it means, uh, non-locality of wave function is non-locality of the distribution of one elementary particles or elementary system. Yes, it's also non-local one. But if you look at different systems, you might use uh, the Newton approximation to systems as uh, two points. And with all the restrictions, special relativity and Newton mechanics might produce. Anyway, there are a lot of, of uh, misunderstanding here, and I would like uh, that Dr. Abrama clarified us all the points uh, here. Uh, so, Dr. Abrama, are you hearing me? Well, yeah. yeah okay, well, uh, you will have about uh, one hour okay. to make your presentation or more if you like. Uh, we will never uh, ask you during the presentation, but after the presentation, everyone is free to ask okay. a question. And uh, if you are ready to reply, you could do it immediately. If not, uh, just might be uh, in uh, a free email or some, something like this. So uh, if you look at the bottom, uh, you will see the chat here. Uh, so okay. uh, our guys could uh, sometimes write uh, a question to the chat. Okay. Anyway, you will answer in the very end to the chat questions as well. But you could look during the presentation, are any uh, particular questions uh, raised. So, and uh, every one of us will take a pen and write their questions or remarks you would like to make uh, in the end of the uh, of this talk. All about, I think, we'll try uh, just to follow during a couple hours or maybe two hours and a half, depending on how we'll discuss it in the future. Okay. Uh, would you mind if if you, you will uh, react uh, your talk and put it later on the site and on uh, on the uh, uh, maybe on to YouTube? No, no, it's fine for me. It's fine. No restrictions. Okay, okay. okay. So uh, we will write it, and uh, you and your friends will get a copy, or it will be publicly available in two days. Okay. Uh, in, uh, in YouTube. Well, okay. So. Okay. Is uh, somebody have a question? Uh, uh, maybe or uh, brief information? No. Okay, so uh, what I would propose, uh, you please uh, upload your presentation. Okay. And uh, just uh, uh, we'll hold with the screen demonstration. Just. Okay, I'm, I'm... Sharing yes. my, my screen, could you see the screen? The share of the screen, okay. Yes, okay. we can see it. Okay, so if you are ready, you uh, you could start. Okay. Uh, it's uh, I will uh, over tell you, you are on the very uh, complicated seminar in Russia. We never invite uh, also just with a regular report just to reiterate some dissertation or some already. Uh, discussed in uh, the textbooks. Okay. So, uh, it's not a, an educational uh, seminar. So we are trying to understand the most complicated uh, issues in physics, okay. which are next to the front or the current front of research. And uh, in my classification, your work is uh, exactly uh, as one of uh, the issues we would like to understand. Okay. Okay. So please start. Okay. I should be within a, uh, well within an hour. I think uh, that I, uh, my my presentation will take uh, 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 forty five minutes more or less. Okay. Uh, first of all, I I, I will thank you uh, uh, thank you all to have invited me to all this seminar, and I'm pleased and honored to be here with you uh, this evening. And I hope you you all enjoy my my talk. Um, <clears throat> I, I would like to to make uh, um, just a, a very very brief introduction of myself, uh, um, because I saw that in the previous uh, uh, seminar, uh, um, new uh, uh, talker, uh, new speaker should present uh, uh, their self. Uh, I'm right. Uh, just a brief introduction of myself or my or my curricula. Okay. Absolutely, yes, sure. Okay. Oh, it's my okay. fault. Uh, 
Well, uh, my name is Germano D'Abramo, uh, and I'm 47. Um, I, I graduated in physics in 1998 at the University of Pisa uh, with a major in, um, in astrophysics. And from 1998 to 2014, uh, I worked as a researcher at the Italian Institute for Space Astrophysics and Planetology and uh, also for a while uh, at the European Space Agency in uh, Frascati, uh, near Rome. Uh, I mainly worked on population modeling and impact probability uh, of near-Earth asteroids. And then starting, starting from 2015, uh, I, I was hired by the Italian Ministry of Education as a physics teacher. Um, I had uh, several research interests in, in, over the years uh, that include algorithmic complexity, in particular the Kolmogorov uh, chiting complexity, and the second law of thermodynamics and uh, special relativity. Uh, in more recent years, uh, I, I became in, interested in, uh, in the possibility of faster than light uh, uh, signaling with quasi-static electric field. Um, well, I, I, I published some 25 papers in international peer-reviewed uh, journals, and uh, I self-published two books uh, through the Amazon publishing service. Um, well, I, I think that uh, this should be more or less a, a complete resume of myself. Uh, so I, I think that I can move to the, to the presentation, okay? Okay. Okay. Uh, well, uh, before I begin my talk, uh, I'm, uh, let me give a due disclaimer. Okay. Uh, in, the in the first few slides, uh, I put my research into context, uh, and what I'm going to, to say uh, does, not, uh, to, uh, does not claim to be uh, complete or uh, exhaustive. Uh, most of these things are uh, well known. Okay. And uh, most important, I am not an expert in classical or uh, quantum electrodynamics and general relativity. Uh, the, the results uh, presented here can be uh, derived um, from a very, very basic uh, law of electrodynamics. So uh, um, no fancy mathematics or... Uh, uh, are needed here, okay? Well, uh, the modern notion of instantaneous uh, um, interactions between physical systems uh, goes back to, to Newton. In fact, uh, action at distance was uh, innate, uh, inborn, in the law of universal uh, gravitation, okay? Uh, the attraction force between masses uh, needs to be central and, uh, and directed towards the, the, the instantaneous present position uh, of the masses. Um, uh, otherwise, uh, the total angular momentum and uh, energy will, will not be conserved. Uh, this, mean that, uh, this means that in, on the long run, uh, it will imply a catastrophic uh, uh, orbital instability. Okay? This has been shown by many scholars uh, in the past. Okay? Uh, remember, for instance, the example with Jupiter and, uh, and the Sun made by Eddington in his book uh, uh, space, time, and uh, uh, gravitation of, 2000, of 1920. And this, uh, this uh, figure has been taken from that book. And uh, following the same logic, uh, Laplace showed that uh, uh, in order for the Earth-Moon system uh, to be uh, as stable as it appears to be, uh, the speed of propagation of classical gravity uh, needs to be uh, order of magnitudes uh, greater than the speed of light. Uh, in, in particular, Laplace estimated that uh, uh, the speed of propagation of classical gravity should be of the order of 10 to 37 times the velocity of light. Okay. Okay. Um, I, well, I think that the, the first problem with the, uh, with the, uh, the notion of instantaneous uh, uh, interaction is uh, a kind of uh, psychological in, in nature. In our direct uh, experience, in, in our everyday life experience, we are used to uh, only to phenomena in which uh, 
the propagation speed is finite, okay? And, uh, and as we feel action at distance, uh, like magic, um, a rescue from the uneasiness uh, with the, the instantaneous uh, interaction came in, in the 18th and 19th centuries uh, with the, the introduction of uh, the notion of field, uh, first in electromagnetism and, and then also for gravitation, okay? The, the notion of field makes all interaction local. Uh, take, for instance, a, ter a test charge. A test charge interacts only with the, the surrounding field and not directly with the, with the distant charge that generates the field, okay? And any modification of the field of the field propagates uh, at a finite speed. Okay. Okay. Uh, for electric and, and magnetic field fields, uh, Maxwell's equations uh, describe uh, how fields are generated uh, by charges and currents. Okay. And how they change in space and time. Uh, Maxwell's equations have a built-in velocity, uh, obviously the, the speed of light. And this is also the, the speed at which uh, uh, the modification of the fields propagates in space. Um, obviously, uh, this, became, uh, this velocity became the most favorite candidate for a finite speed for all interaction between uh, physical systems. And uh, well, we know that later Einstein showed that uh, the speed of light is uh, uh, the maximum speed uh, attainable in, in nature. And then this, uh, the, the speed of light has become officially the, the, the speed of all fundamental uh, physical interactions. Okay. Um, to find electric and uh, magnetic fields uh, at point X uh, and time T, uh, generated by specific uh, charge and uh, uh, current distributions at point X prime, okay. Um, we need to calculate the scalar potential phi, this one, and uh, the, the vector potential A, this one. Uh, these potentials um, are solutions of uh, Maxwell's equations, and they graph these integrals uh, must be calculated at the retarded time uh, TR, this one, which is the, the present time T minus the, 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 the time taken by, by light to cover the distance between the charges and currents and point X, okay? Uh, in the end, the fact that distant modifications of the local field are not instantaneous, but move at a finite speed, um, is innate, is inborn uh, in, in, the, in the solutions of the Maxwell's equations, okay? Uh, well, for, for completeness, uh, it must be said that also the advanced potentials are legitimate solutions of, uh, of the Maxwell's uh, equations. In, in the case of the advanced potentials, uh, uh, the fields uh, depend upon the future values of charges and currents. Uh, obviously, advanced potentials uh, are usually are usually discarded uh, uh, since they are considered to be unphysical. Okay, in any case, uh, it, it must be said that uh, uh, the mathematics behind the, the Maxwell's equations does not require that the information must necessarily uh, move from the past. Uh, at a finite speed. We, we have only chosen uh, the retarded potential as solutions of Maxwell's equation because they, they seem to be more physical. They are more physical uh, actually. Okay. Um, uh, well, under specific conditions, uh, retarded, retarded potentials uh, can be de derived also for uh, uh, the gravitational field. Uh, they are particular solutions of the Einstein's uh, fields equation. Um, see, for instance, those derived by uh, Carlip in his, in his 2000 paper. And um, also in this case, uh, uh, the speed of gravity is, uh, is finite and equal to C, the velocity of light. Um, moreover, 
according to, according to uh, general relativity, uh, although the, the speed of gravity cannot exceed the, the speed of light, uh, the gravitational force is always directed towards the, the present instantaneous position of the masses of the bodies. Uh, uh, namely, there is no gravitation, what is called the gravitational aberration, okay? Even if the masses accelerates, okay? Uh, and this is due to some velocity uh, de dependent terms in, in the potentials. Um, all this, uh, <laughs> all this seem to, to reconcile in the end the Eddington Laplace paradox with, the, with a finite speed for the propagation of gravity. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, now consider uh, the electric field uh, generated by um, an arbitrarily moving uh, point charge E is one. Okay. Uh, this formula uh, can be derived by writing the, the previous uh, retarded potentials uh, for a point charge E. Okay. And this, uh, these potentials are uh, widely known as Lienard Vickert potentials. Uh, the quantities uh, uh, inside the, the square brackets um, uh, must be evaluated at the retarded time, TR, TR okay? Uh, the first term in, in the previous equation uh, does not depend upon the acceleration of the, of the charge, and it is called the velo velocity field or near field. Uh, the, the first term is one, okay. While the second term uh, depends upon the, the acceleration of the charge and uh, it is called uh, the acceleration or radiation field. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, this one. And this, uh, this term is uh, uh, the part of the equation uh, responsible for the generation of the electro electromagnetic uh, waves, okay. Okay, uh, now let, let's, let's get to the, the very interesting uh, feature here. Uh, if the velocity of the, uh, of the charge is constant, uh, the, the electric field uh, can be written in terms of the charge's present position. Uh, uh, does, there is no retardation in, uh, in the direction um, in the direction of the field, uh, and uh, a, a distant observer measures the field as always directed from where the charge is now, okay? Um, please not, notice that this is not a new uh, result. It is known since the 19th century and belongs to, to classical uh, electromagnetism. Okay? This formula gives exactly the, the, the field generated by charge E, and it is expressed in terms of the uh, charge present position, in particular the vector R, which uh, runs from the charge uh, present position to the position of the, of the observer, okay? Okay, uh, well, uh, this field property uh, that I have just said can be uh, derived by appealing, also by appealing to the principle of relativity, okay? Uh, consider uh, a charge Q, a stationary, a stationary charge Q, okay? And an observer moving uh, at a constant velocity V uh, to the left, okay? Um, um, consider also that V is much lesser than C, the velocity of light, okay? Well, the observer, this observer, uh, sees the field lines, generated by the charge as rigidly attached to the, the, the charge, uh, much like uh, uh, the street heading to, uh, to the center of a city, okay, when uh, they are seen by a moving driver inside a car, okay? Uh, suppose this is the center of a city and this, uh, these lines represent, represent the, the streets. If a, a driver move with this car to the left, he see the, the the streets as rigidly attached to the center of the city, much like uh, uh, the, the, the situation with the charge and then the uh, field lines. 
But according to, to the principle of relativity, um, no one can say who is really moving uh, with constant velocity. And the situation uh, in the left side, this one, is equivalent to the case in which uh, the charge moves and the observer is, uh, is at rest. I see the, the, the right, uh, right hand panel, this one. Okay, and even in this case, uh, the field lines uh, move rigidly with the charge and there is no retardation in the, di in the direction of the, uh, of the field for a distant observer, okay? Even in this case, uh, when the charge Q move to the, to the right, the, observer, the stationary observer sees the field lines as rigidly uh, attached to the, to, the, to the charge. Okay, now let's apply the, this field property to, to equal and opposite charges Uh, these two uh, discharges, one positive and one, neg uh, one negative, are uh, forced to move uh, at a constant velocity, uh, one towards the other, okay? Uh, and this is a sort of uh, uh, shrinking uh, electric dipole, or if you want, a vanishing uh, uh, electric dipole, okay? Uh, the charges start at a distance r from the meeting point. The meeting point is uh, here, more or less here, okay? Uh, and move at, uh, at a constant velocity d, uh, one towards the other, okay? And uh, an observer is placed uh, at large distance d from the, from the meeting point, okay? Uh, suppose factor that uh, the charges can interpenetrate at the meeting point here uh, without, uh, uh, without friction, okay? One charge, uh, Uh, the smaller charge can uh, pass through the other charge, the, the greater charge, without uh, friction, without the deceleration, okay? Uh, and so they, uh, even after the interpenetration, they maintain uh, their constant velocity. Okay, according to the, the field property seen before, uh, at every instant of time, Uh, the fields measured by the, uh, the observer is uh, directed uh, towards the instantaneous present position of the, of the charges. So there is no retardation in the direction of the fields, okay? And um, moreover, the, the, the total field measured by the observer is uh, always the, the vector sum of the instantaneous fields of the charges, okay? Okay, below, the, uh, this is the, uh, what I, uh, I call a thick central line, okay? Uh, below this uh, thick central line, um, the charges are represented where they are at the present time, okay? Uh, while above this uh, thick central line, the charges uh, are, represented, uh, are represented at the retarded positions, namely uh, where they are still seen by the observer because of the light propagation delay, okay? Okay. Then at the instant of interpenetration, uh, the total field uh, measured by the observer uh, become, becomes instantaneously equal to zero Uh, no matter how distant uh, the observer is from the, from the meeting point, okay? Uh, we uh, do not uh, need electrical contact uh, and charge neutraliz neutralization uh, at the interpenetration point, okay? Um, in fact, all this, uh, all this uh, the, the, the cancellation of the, of the total field uh, happens uh, simply because uh, of the superposition of uh, the two equal and opposite uh, um, fields of the charges, okay? Below the, the thick central line, this line here, below, um, the charges are represented uh, one inside the other at the present time, okay? While uh, uh, above the thick central line here, uh, the, char uh, the, the charges are represented Um, where they are still seen by the observer uh, due to the finite speed of light. This distance is more or less 
V, the velocity of the charge, multiplied by the, the time needed by the light, uh, light to, to cover the distance between uh, this position and the position of the observer, okay? Uh, well, uh, it, this is also to understand that the, the cancellation of the, of the dipole field uh, happens instantaneously at every point in which we decided to put the observer, okay? It is not necessary that the observer is midway between uh, the starting positions of the of the charges. It could be here, here, everywhere. Okay, here, uh, just a, a, a quick look at the, at the mathematical expression of the shrinking dipole field from instant t equal to zero, uh, when the charges are uh, at distance r from the limiting point to uh, till time r divided by v, which is the, the time needed by each charge to, to reach the limiting point. Namely, at time t equal to r divided by v, both charges interpenetrate. Okay. Let me uh, briefly stress again the important point here. At the instant of interpenetration, the dipole field uh, becomes uh, equal to zero instantaneously at every point in space. And uh, this is due only to the, the field property seen before. Okay. Okay. Now, it's easy to, to figure out a shrinking dipole variant, a modification of the uh, of the dipole, uh, shrinking dipole described before, uh, that seems to allow faster than light, um, instantaneous actually, communication of information. Uh, suppose there is an operator at the meeting point here, uh, who, decide, who decides uh, uh, at his own will whether to put the, the charges in electrical contact or not at the interpenetration instant, okay? If the operator chooses to, to put the charges in electrical contact, from this moment, from this moment onward, uh, the field remains equal to zero at every point in space, okay? On the other hand, if the, uh, the operator decides not to put the charge in electrical contact, okay, uh, the dipole field goes back to, to be different from zero, uh, the, the dipole field is, is zero when the charge interpenetrate at the instant of the interpenetration. But if the operator decides, decides not to put the, the, the charges in electrical contact, uh, each charge retain, uh, retains uh, its original charge. And when they uh, move away from one another, uh, the field, the electric field, is uh, again a dipole field, but this time inverted. Okay. Um, the crucial point here is that the distant observer is one. Is a, 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 a distant, the distant observer is simply by measuring the, the electric field, the dipole field, is instantaneously informed on the choice made by the operator. Okay, if the operator decides to uh, to put in electrical contact the, 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 the two uh, charges, then uh, we measure a zero field from this moment onward. Otherwise, if the, the operator decides not to put the, the charges in electrical contact, the distant observer measure an electric field different from zero, but instantaneously, okay? Uh, soon after, uh, as soon as the charges they, uh, received move away from one another with their original charge, the distant observer measure uh, uh, instantaneously a dipole field. Okay, there is an objection though that could be at least an objection uh, that could be really advanced. Uh, we have said that the potentials and thus the fields um, depend only on what the charges are doing at the retarded time, okay? Suppose that the, that the operator puts the charges in contact and the total charge cancels out, okay? 
when the neutral spheres start to uh, recede after the interpenetration, the field at the distant location of the observer should be as if uh, uh, the spheres still have the original charge, since the information of the electrical contact and charge neutralization has not yet arrived at him, okay? Uh, the observer will measure a definitive zero of the, of the field only after the information of the electrical contact has arrived at him. And uh, this happens after a light, a light time nearly equal to the distance D divided by C, okay? Uh, sorry, I, I go back to the previous uh, slide. Okay, uh, according to the received view, uh, even if the operator put in electrical contact the, the, the two spheres, the observer still measure, should still measure a, a field different from zero, uh, uh, at least for a time equal to the time needed by light uh, to, to reach the distant observer, and this light should carry the information of the electrical contact. Okay. In, in fact, it, it can be demonstrated that this objection is not compatible with Gauss's law. Uh, Gauss's law can be applied to static and moving charges and fields, and uh, as a matter of fact, is uh, is part of the Maxwell's equations. Uh, okay, Co consider an arbitrarily uh, closed surface S, this uh, big uh, circle, okay, uh, that encloses only one of the two charges after the electrical contact, okay? The, this line represents the time at which uh, both charges interpenetrate and uh, the time in which uh, there is the electrical contact, uh, contact and uh, charge neutralization, okay? And the line below represents uh, the same situation one, seconds af one second after, when the charges the, without uh, the, the, the chargeless sphere start to move away from one another, okay? Well, uh, the electric field just after the, the charge neutralization must become instantaneously and definitively equal to zero uh, all over the space, okay? Otherwise, we would have a flux of the electric field different from zero across the closed surface S with no charge inside it. And this would be in blatant violation of Gauss's law. Gauss's law can also be used to prove uh, uh, that even with the generation of an, uh, of an electric dipole field, the field must uh, come into existence instantaneously all over the space, okay? Uh, you can see here a, a brief sketch of the, of the proof based uh, again on uh, Gauss's law. And um, by the way, let me quote uh, Dirac once he wrote, uh, Whenever an electron is emitted, the column field around it is simultaneously emitted, forming a kind of dressing for the electron. Uh, similarly, uh, when an electron is absorbed, uh, the column field around it is simultaneously absorbed. Okay, obviously all this has, uh, uh, all, uh, what I have just said has a strong implication for the relativity of simultaneity. It can be shown that Gauss's law guarantees that the cancellation or the generation of the dipole field is instantaneous at every two point in space when observed from any inertial reference frame. And therefore, it implies that simultaneity is absolute, at least for the generation or the, can or the cancellation of field, of electric field. Okay. From the experimental point of view, I know of at least two experiments on the propagation speed of quasi-static fields. Uh, one is on the propagation speed of the magnetic velocity field and it was performed in 2007 
by an international research group led, led by the Belarusian researcher Kolmetsky. Um, the other one is on the propagation speed of the, the electric velocity field. Uh, it was performed by an Italian group in Frascati in 2015. Um, okay, well, let me briefly, uh, very briefly uh, review uh, the setup and the results of the Frascati experiment, uh, since uh, it is more pertinent here. Okay, uh, well, bunches of uh, clusters of electrons, uh, ultra relativistic electrons, uh, with gamma nearly equal to 1000, and this means that the, their velocity is very close to the velocity of light. Uh, are generated at the Frascati uh, beam test facility uh, and delivered, ejected uh, to a seven meters hole, experimental hole, uh, as is shown in this figure. Okay. Moreover, uh, sensors to measure the electric field of the generated by the, electro, the electron beam uh, are, uh, were placed at a maximum distance of about uh, five meters from the pipe exit. Okay, this is the pipe exit. This is the, the, the beam uh, delivered by the, the pipe. And uh, more or less five meters away are placed, uh, the, the measurement, measurement sensors uh, were placed. Okay. Uh, well, since the, the, the electrons of the beam move uh, at a constant velocity, the electric field uh, generated by the, uh, these electrons can be conveniently written in, in terms of the electron, uh, electrons present position as uh, we have seen before, okay? Uh, according to this, this formula, uh, the maximum value of the, of the electric field is uh, measured when uh, when uh, the, the electrons are, are just below the sensors, uh, more or less here, okay? And um, the, the maximum uh, ex expected value of the, of the electric field is given by this formula, this one, uh, which uh, that derives from this one, okay? And uh, here, H is the distance, is the minimum distance between the sensors and the, the beam is this distance, okay? Okay, uh, uh, the peak value uh, uh, of electric field measured by the Frascati group uh, is in very close agreement with uh, this, uh, this expected value, okay? Well, uh, the problem here is that uh, uh, even if the field uh, can be conveniently written in terms of the instantaneous present position of the electrons, the intensity of the field should, be de de should depend anyway uh, upon the position of the electrons at the retarded time. And uh, this is because uh, this is in, in the retarded nature of the potentials. Well, with, with gamma nearly equal to 1000, it can be calculated that uh, the retarded position uh, that gives the, the measured peak value uh, is at least between 300 and 500 meters behind the pipe exit, okay? Obviously, this is an unphysical region uh, since the electrons have never uh, been there. Uh, as a matter of fact, the, the radius of the accelerator at the Frascati uh, beam facility uh, is a uh, more or less uh, is uh, maybe less than 60 meters, okay? As a matter of fact, uh, uh, at, that, at that, uh, that retarded time, uh, uh, the beam uh, doesn't even exist, okay? And then the value of the field measured by the Frascati group should have been nearly equal to zero and not equal to the, the expected peak value. Uh, thus, the Frascati results uh, are more uh, uh, compatible with the assumption that the field is instantaneously generated all over the space just after the appearance of the, of the, electron, of the electrons at the pipe exit, okay? Uh, the, these results are, are also more uh, compatible with the, the assumption that the electric field 
rigidly move, moves with the electrons, is rigidly attached to the electrons. Well, uh, let's now come to a few open problems in my, my results. I know uh, there are many more uh, than this. Uh, the first one is obviously that according to special, special relativity, an instantaneous communication of information violate, violates causality, okay? Uh, what I can say is that causality uh, violation is in fact uh, a consequence of the relativity of simultaneity. Um, the, the relativity of simultaneity implies that time passes at different rates in relatively moving uh, reference frames. And uh, this different flow time, um, along with the, the uh, obviously the use of instantaneous signaling, can cause uh, causality violation. Uh, in fact, if time passed at the same rate in every reference frame, even with the, even with the instantaneous signaling, there will be no uh, causality violation and the, effect, and the effect can never precede the cause. Okay, one, one of the aspects of causal, causality paradox is that if one use uh, instantaneous or faster than light communication between uh, two uh, reference frames uh, relatively moving at cost and velocity, one can uh, demonstrate with uh, special relativity that uh, uh, the cause, uh, um, uh, sorry, the, the effect can precede the cause. Uh, for instance, uh, an obs one obser observer send a message to another observer in uh, in the other reference frame. And uh, according to special relativity, it is possible that uh, can be calculated, it can be shown uh, through calculation that uh, it may happen that if the, the signal is uh, faster than light or instantaneous, the sender could receive the reply by the receiver before he send his message to, to, to the other person. Okay, this is the core of the causality paradox. Well, um, but at least for the cancellation of the generation of the dipole field, we have just seen that simultaneity seems to be absolute, okay? Uh, well, I understand that not many people are, are willing to, to resolve the causality paradox uh, uh, arising from these results uh, getting rid, by getting rid of uh, the relativity of simultaneity. But uh, I want to say that this is a possibility. Okay, this, this could be a possibility. Okay, uh, another uh, open problem is, uh, um, how does the absolute simultaneity of the dipole, uh, or, or the dipole field cancellation or generation stand with the, the cogency of uh, Einstein's total experiment on the relativity of simultaneity? Take, for instance, uh, the train and the platform uh, total experiment. Uh, this is a sketch. Uh, in this figure, you can see a sketch of this uh, total experiment. If one uses light, a light source, uh, at the center of the train, this red dot, the detection of uh, the light beams generated by this source at both ends of the, of the train uh, is simultaneous only if uh, the observer is stationary with the train, okay? Well, if instead one uses a shrinking dipole as a source, so no more a light source, but uh, a shrinking dipole, suppose that the red dot now is the meeting point of a shrinking electric dipole, okay? Then the cancellation of the dipole, of the dipole field at both ends of the train is always simultaneous regardless of the state of motion of, of uh, the observer, okay? For, for what regard, uh, regards future prospect, uh, I think that uh, the very next steps should be the, the following. Uh, first, we need the further experimental uh, uh, tests. And I also hope that some of them will try to, to implement the shrinking uh, dipole setup, okay? 
Second, I, if the results, okay, if the results from the experiment, from the experiments are positive, we need further theoretical research to answer the, 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 the previous open problems and many more actually, okay? Uh, moreover, I think that uh, if the, the instantaneous transmission uh, with quasi-static field is experimentally uh, confirmed, uh, we must necessarily uh, find a connection with the quantum non-locality, okay? My opinion is that if uh, the instantaneous phenomena uh, coming from uh, uh, static fields or, or quasi-static fields are uh, real, are real phenomena, uh, they, need, uh, they need to be a connection with the quantum non-locality, okay? I think that it could not be possible for nature to have two kind, two different type of non-locality, one quantum non-locality and the other uh, tied to the, the, the electric field. Okay, this is my opinion, obviously. Well, uh, let, me, let me end this talk with uh, a joke, uh, a sort of. Uh, the, the statement you, you see, you read on, uh, on, the, on the slide is, uh, uh, one uh, wild opinion of mine, okay? The universe is too big for nature uh, to set up uh, uh, an upper limit to velocity, okay? Thank you very much uh, for your attention. Thank you very much. Well, uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, please close for a moment your presentation we will talk about, but if somebody will ask you in the future uh, to show one or another slide, you should be ready to set it up again. Okay. So, but uh, now just please uh, close it in order we see each other in our direct communications. Okay, sorry, I, I try, I'm trying to... Uh, to... Uh, okay, I, uh, okay. Okay. Well, I invite everyone to uh, open uh, your camera in order we see each other uh, for the communications. Uh, who are with us at the moment? Uh, so, and now we first uh, discuss in general uh, in support and uh, to uh, to talk what we hear. Uh, and uh, uh, just maybe uh, make uh, some prior comments uh, what it's all was about. After this, we will ask particular questions uh, to uh, our uh, professor who make a, a presentation. And again, in the very end, we will, uh, everyone uh, have an option to uh, put some comments, opinions, or maybe even a position for it criticists of also uh, all possible uh, at the seminar. So first, no, okay, I'll start uh, what I hear. Uh, it's a very interesting presentation regarding uh, the options for instantaneous uh, signals in classical field electrodynamics. So uh, just look, it's not quantum physics. He talked only about classical fields and he made an experiment with the classical fields and show that if there is one operator said in, in one galaxy and there is a, a receiver in the other galaxy they still could communicate insta uh, almost instantaneously depending how fastly they might receive the information from their local devices so the devices for reading information might be local or for writing information might be local, but uh, communication line might be uh, instantaneous and non-local by using the fields. It's all the matter is how sensitive are your local devices uh, to get uh, the moment that uh, it's zero charge or non zero charge and so on. So it's uh, quite interesting, quite new, and what is important that there are some uh, direct measurements of Coulomb fields, and people show that, yes, Coulomb field, Coulomb fields 
a, a firmly moving next to the uh, point center of the spherical symmetry of these fields. Uh, Abrama uh, used the point particle model. He still modeling that there is a point charge in the very center of the uh, spherical field structure. But all the other, uh, his, uh, consideration, uh, looks very, uh, very reasonable. Because if you accepted this classical model with point charges, so we have to, to accept, uh, to accept the rigid, uh, a company of Coulomb lines, of Faraday lines. And, uh, Obviously, this is uh, exactly uh, connected with the Laplace paradox. If you will, if you will not accept instantaneous organization of fields and forces, not potentials, but fields and forces, vectors. If you will not accept it, instantaneous organization, the solar system will collapse maybe in a few hundred years. Not just for thousand years, even two, three hundred years, it will be enough for the global collapse due to the momentum, the momentum of forces. And Laplace first, uh, uh, introduced us to this world that there is some, something faster than this, uh, velocity, uh, finite velocity, at least the velocity of speed, uh, for communication. But again, it's communications of fields. And yes, there are direct measurements. Uh, for gravitational organizations, that the accelerations of, uh, of the satellites are always uh, directed to the center of mass, say, of the solar system. It's a, it's where exact measurements. There are uh, no retardation or parallax for forces. There is retardation of parallax only for the light of the wave signals, but it's quite different. And here, uh, in my opinion, quite reasonably uh, split uh, the electromagnetic fields into the wave uh, fraction and to the Coulomb fraction, which is not wave, uh, just uh, uh, just a company at each Coulomb, uh, Coulomb charge. But the wave fraction, it's, uh, which depends from 1 or R, uh, it's, it's might be, uh, with retardation, it's might be with delay. He never talks that it might be instantaneous. No. The wave signal, uh, have to get some retardation. But the Coulomb part, as well as the Newton force, Newton never related his force with time. You, you never see, uh, the time in his, uh, formulations. It was instant force and instant Interaction at a distance, how Newton told. Therefore, it looks that classical physics allow to uh, speculate about the non-locality we first uh, introduced in quantum terms. But still, what is new is that now many physicists started to understand that Maxwell field organizations of currents and fields is also in a locally organized system of charge and field densities. Currents or current densities and fields are locally re related at every point. No retardations in these relations. Maxwell never introduced charges. He introduced only charge densities. And this is very essential issue because the medium might be one big charge, but densities or current densities in this medium can cooperate instantaneously over the whole volume. No matter this volume is uh, within a laboratory room or this uh, volume is distributed between few galaxies. If they obey the Maxwell system, or muscular organizations of charges and currents, so please accept instantaneous uh, correlations of Maxwell fields. 
This is what about uh, the top was, and therefore I selected this useful top just to change a bit our uh, regular understanding of that all all classical physics, both uh, gravitation and uh, electrodynamics, should be local one and only non-locality means only quantum physics. It's not true. World is either local or non-local. And therefore, it no matter what are uh, the scales, uh, micro scales, mega scales, uh, the non-local phenomena in mega scales have been already proved in astronomic measurements. So, uh, if you like, uh, just to make a brief, uh, your understanding of the uh, topic in question, please, if you read uh, uh, the. Uh, the literature and uh, have uh, to talk about some, maybe some phenomena you know uh, with classical fields in this line. Yes, it's uh, time to make us some short uh, presentation about in support of the general talk. Is somebody ready? No. So, uh, if uh, if not, uh, just uh, raise your hands. Uh, uh, just put uh, put uh, if you have a question, uh, a question. Just uh, raise your hand, and uh, in, in the line of your uh, of your questions, I will ask uh, Dr. Abrama about uh, his uh, talk today. Olga, please ask ask. Uh, Start with the microphone, please. Olga, Olga, you, you should uh, turn on. Yes, please. Thank you for your uh, idea and your good um, report. Um, oh, I have a simple question. Is there any experiment that uh, told us uh, uh, whether the Cologne field is um, uh, momentary or uh, Coulomb field uh, move with um, light speed. I, uh, can you um, have that experiment? Is it um, possible or not? Okay. Well. I, if I have uh, uh, properly understood your your question, um, well, I I'm not aware of, uh, uh, um, with the exception of the Frascati experiment, uh, I am not aware of other experiments uh, that try to uh, to measure if the uh, column field, the, the quasi static column field, moves uh, at, uh, at the speed of light or moves. Uh, faster than light. In, according to the results uh, of the uh, Frascati group, uh, it seems that uh, uh, the, the line fields uh, or the, uh, the column fields uh, move uh, uh, faster than light. Yeah, yeah. N not only faster than light, instantaneous, uh, instantaneously in space, uh, uh, namely uh, with no retardation at all. Okay, this is this, seem, this is a, a a possible reading of the uh, of the results by Fra the Frascati experiments. Uh, this means that uh, if you move, uh, um, uh, how can I say? If you take a charge, okay, with the, its column field and move this charge, uh, every observer in every point in space, however far from the the charge. Uh, see the charge retarded with the eyes because light takes time to, to cover the distance. But if uh, the distant observer could measure the field he, um, generated by the, the moving charge, he would measure uh, that the field at the distance location of the observer move uh, exactly at the same time in which uh, the, the charge has moved. Okay, this is uh, the, the, the interpretation of the. Frascati experiments. Uh, this seems to be, uh, I, I understand that this seems to be uh, quite weird and strange. 
because we are all uh, used to uh, uh, um, uh, something that moves not faster than light, uh, and uh, it is difficult to 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 understand why and if it is possible this. But it seems that. Uh, uh, according to the results of the Frascati experiment, <coughs> experiments, this seems the, the case, okay? Uh, but I am aware of only of this experiment, and, uh, and I don't know if other people have tried to, uh, uh, apart from Kolmetsky and uh, et al., who <coughs> um, um, may <coughs> made an experiment with the magnetic fields, okay? Uh, and their results were the same. Were, were the same, namely uh, the magnet magnetic fields uh, seems to move uh, rigidly with the, the source. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> any distant uh, distant observer measure the, the change of the field instantaneously. Okay, uh, it means uh, the, the they exist in absolute time. Uh, well, uh, okay. Um, According to, to what I, I have shown in my, my presentation, uh, this possibility, namely the fact that you could, uh, in principle, um, uh, send information uh, without delay, without any delay, uh, obviously uh, is against, is at odds with the, uh, the, um, uh, the, uh, uh, the law of causality. Uh, okay, uh, and uh, so uh, this means that, uh, in a few words, if I can send uh, a message instantaneously, okay, this, according to special relativity, would imply a causality violation. Uh, I, uh, um, namely, obviously, I, I can send a message, I can re receive a reply by, by you, before I send you a message, okay? But this is possible uh, only if, uh, uh, well, uh, the, the causality pa paradox could be resolved um, only if uh, the time passes at the same rate in every reference frame, okay? Uh, what I want to say in, in a few words, instantaneous communication of information is only compatible with absolute time. Because if there is no absolute time, but the time is relative, uh, the time, the, re the, re the relativity of simultaneity plus uh, the instant communications uh, means uh, a paradox, uh, imply, implies a paradox, okay? Uh, so yeah, the answer to your question is yes. If uh, we can send message instantaneously, this in would imply that uh, uh, time is absolute, must be absolute. Mm -hmm. Why nobody knows about Frascati experiment? Uh, sorry? Why almost uh, nobody knows about ah, okay. this famous experiment, okay. great experiment, I, I. Yeah, uh, this is uh, this is their experiment. Uh, um, uh, were published before uh, first uh, on a on on a journal uh, um, which uh, uh, was a conference journal and then in uh, at least two peer reviewed journals so uh, in in a sense uh, this experiment passed the, the peer review pro process okay but i agree with you that it is not uh, known it is not widely known uh, all over the world okay they made an experiment uh, using, uh, as I, I, I have shown in my slides, using uh, 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 electron beams in a very short space, uh, only five meters from the sensors and the pipe exit, okay? And um, there is a reason for this, because as, as I have shown before, uh, uh, the velocity field or the near field, namely the part uh, of the field and non, not depending from acceleration, uh, fall off the K with the, the distance very, very rapidly, uh, very fast. So uh, I, um, just to comment also uh, what uh, Igor uh, uh, previously said, I think that uh, my, is my, it is my opinion, it will be very difficult to use uh, this, uh, um, this fact, okay, this, uh, uh, this discovery, this thought experiment, uh, to create 
uh, an, uh, a real instrument of communication because uh, the um, uh, quasi static fields uh, decay with with distance very very fast so uh, it would be impossible for us to for instance uh, measure uh, the the field of uh, uh, of the moon uh, generated on the moon uh, or uh, by a charge on the moon okay because the distance um, in, in, in just a small distance uh, um, cut off the, the the field very 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 rapidly. It's one divide uh, uh, distance uh, in square distance. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and while the 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 part the radiation field, uh, namely the part of the equation which gives the electromagnetic waves, uh, decay with the uh, R to the minus one, which is uh, a mild decay, a milder decay, less uh, less violent, less strong. Okay, this is I think that this is one reason because uh, 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 this is one reason why we can uh, see the light from distant uh, stars, but we, we will not uh, measure any fi uh, static field from uh, a distant star. Okay. Even if uh, it were possible to have uh, charges of the order of uh, one, two, three, ten coulomb, okay, which is a huge charge. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, just Thank before you. I will, I will give uh, the floor to another question. I'd like to uh, reply to Olga as well uh, for her questions. Uh, first, uh, why are it's uh, not so well known around? For the same reason that uh, the gravitational experiment of uh, Dr. Pozarev were not uh, widely uh, discussed, even discussed, because he measured the same. He measured the retarded signal from the waves, and he measured the instantaneous influence or the position of the, uh, uh, the star uh, calculated position. He measured it, and he proved in direct measurements, like Prascati mm -hmm. did, the same in uh, uh, 60 or 70. Uh, and here, uh, the guys uh, made the same. They proved that there is no emanation of fields from the point. Because our textbooks uh, used to say there is a point charge and there is a field which is emanating from it. If something is emanated, it should be with a finite speed because it's energy. The idea of the, uh, the charge organization that the field is already distributed over the whole world. Therefore, uh, annihilation or creation of the charge is the process to create the, the charge and its Coulomb fields instantaneously over the world. Therefore, any changes uh, with the, in this rigid motion should be instantaneously fixed or measure it uh, in the uh, whole wall. This is the idea that if it was created or organized non-locally, it should be uh, stay in the non-local formation forever. It means uh, that the fields, Coulomb fields, are rigidly following the center of the symmetry. And we uh, shouldn't uh, tell that there is a charge in the center of symmetry. We should talk uh, that the charge is the non-local formation which occupies the total universe as the quantum particle occupies the total universe. It distributed. It's a uh, distribution state, distribution state, and which mm -hmm. rigidly or tightly uh, organized. If you change it, the position of the center, which we associate with the particle, it means that you change the whole non-local structure instantaneously in the total world. And so an observer, local observer, observers are always local, and local observer in the other galaxy should instantaneously, uh, instantaneously get the changes in the fields there. So uh, and, uh, as to uh, the point of causality uh, issues and the reason. The reason if uh, one uh, operator moved the center of the charge here in our, in our galaxy, but the, uh, the consequence will be that the fields 
have been changed there very far in the other galaxy. And here, uh, Dr. Abramo is right that it should be one universal time, which we know as the uh, absolute time or world time, which is not related to fields at all. Because in general relativity and in uh, special relativity, we are introducing fields or times uh, which are related to the local system, to the local field, to something local. But there is one non-local. Uh, in, in the non-local world, one time, it's called coordinate time, which is universal mm -hmm. for all the times. So mm -hmm. every system has its uh, its time. I invited, uh, you will see, uh, uh, the professor from uh, Moscow Aviation uh, uh, Uni University, who will tell us about the time of spin systems. So even rotating system has another kind of time in the system. But still there is one universal time, coordinate time, or Newton time, which should cover all the process in their instantaneous connections. No, uh, this is uh, just uh, how we should uh, just uh, uh, answer comment what we hear today and what uh, the guys in Frascati did. They did the same what Kozarev did uh, in his uh, gravitational experiments, but no one would not like even to discuss them. And they have difficulties they made first measurements in 1912 and tried to publish. In three years, they answered uh, to reviewers about the details of the experiment. Once the reviewers passed very uh, uh, carefully over all the steps, just in three years, they just uh, allowed, uh, allowed to publish it. Well, anyway, uh, we have... Uh, to, uh, to test uh, uh, Nikolai Kozarev experiments also very, very carefully what he did and reiterated and republished it because this is the same. Okay, now I will uh, give... Uh, Thank you. Uh, yes, for another question. Vladimir, could you, uh, could you uh, open your camera so we see you? Yes. Okay, please. Now, please ask. Yeah, hi, Germano. Uh, thank you very much for your wonderful presentation. It was a little technical for me, so I'm going to have a simple question for you. I would say a pragmatical question. Um, how far we are from uh, uh, practical implementations of what you say? I mean, I believe that all alien civilization are communicated instantly, and we're just missing the whole traffic. <laughs> so <laughs> I wonder when we can practically start to communicate instantly, what do you think? Well, uh, Vladimir, very, very good question. Thank you. Uh, well, um, as I said uh, to Olga before, uh, my opinion is that uh, due to the nature of the, of the field, of the electric field, um, which decay very, uh, to the um, nature of the quasi-static electric field, which they which fall off very rapidly. I I see I hardly uh, see any possibility to use this uh, this uh, thought experiment to uh, to uh, to build um, uh, a kind of a, a radio to send um, a, a quotation mark to a radio to send this uh, instantaneous signal signal. Um, but I obviously I don't know if. Uh, uh, this phenomenon is uh, uh, possible also for uh, with other uh, kind of uh, fields, static fields, and maybe who know in the future one can uh, one can discover this uh, new kind of field which could be uh, with which we could uh, build this kind of uh, instrument. Okay. Um, um, as far as uh, electric fields are concerned, I think that uh, this not this not will be possible. But the, the, the important point, the crucial point to me is uh, to accept the fact that, uh, in principle, it is possible because uh, what what counts what counts is uh, 
the possibility, the physical possibility, the fact that uh, this possibility is not forbidden uh, by by physics, by the, the law of physics. Okay, this is important. This is uh, the, uh, um, I can say that this could be. I, I want I want to be humble, but this could be a first step towards uh, what you say, what you have said. Uh, well, thank you, uh, thank you, Germain. Okay, thank you. Well, what do I would like to just to add a few words for your questions. We are as far as we were just about thirty years ago when we started to look at the programs for uh, instantaneous communications uh, with uh, space satellite, because uh, we have lost a lot of satellites in the solar system due to the time communication. Sometimes even uh, to communicate with the uh, Satellites next to the Mars, we uh, uh, we use about 16 minutes one way, return at just half an hour, and so therefore we don't have enough time to uh, to give a proper or uh, adaptive commands to the satellites. Therefore, there are programs uh, for instant communication. People do understand that information is instantaneous, but the record of information it might be uh, related this which is related to the motion of bodies is yes it's restricted uh, so it's uh, local replacement of bodies say at the library is always restricted by uh, the special theory of relativity distant communications of the fields not bodies but the fields are instantaneous over all the universe, over every uh, no, local organization, over every uh, biological system, starting from a bacteria uh, to, uh, to the elephant. All the information which uh, is in such system is uh, moving instantaneously, which supports uh, the organization. And so people do understand this, and so no restriction for fields. There is restrictions for the particles for the integrals. If you integrate the field between galaxies, it will be also one big particle. It, it's standing particle. It's not moving. Only the densities are moving. So, despite we understand the nature properly, despite we have the uh, well-performed measurements, like positive measurements, despite we have uh, quantum uh, non-locality in quantum mechanics, we are still restricted uh, by uh, uh, for non-local phenomena by the laboratory, say, with uh, superconductors, uh, by the laboratory with uh, the experiments which ASPE made first uh, for photons. And only in the end of the century, Gizen uh, showed it was first uh, macroscopic uh, experiment for 17 kilometers between uh, recorder, uh, receiver, and uh, transmitter. He proved no localities. Still, no proper devices which could use macroscopic correlations in order to register them, like speed devices or something like this. So we don't have local devices for proper measurements of instantaneous field correlations. Uh, in the uh, Podolsky Rosen Einstein paradox. That is the point. Once we'll get such devices, uh, it will be applications and so uh, uh, and a lot of physics here. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, uh, well, uh, Andrei Igorov, uh, could you open your camera? We see you. Okay, please ask mm -hmm. the question. Uh, hello, dear colleagues. I just have a little comment to reply to Igor Edmundo. Which, okay. regarding his statement that uh, Kozarev uh, discovered the signals from stars kind of uh, instantaneous position, future position of the star. So he like saw that by his experiment. So actually, I would not be considering that is a solid detection and solid discovery. I read uh, his original publications on that. And uh, honestly, I can say that uh, the detection was not 
uh, was not careful enough. He saw something like the signal of this kind from just a few objects. From other objects, he did not see this. Uh, his followers later on tried to replicate this experiment, but they did not presumably achieve the reliability and the precision also. Because um, it's quite quite difficult experiment to conduct it uh, technically accurate and so on. Thus, without independent, new independent replication, we can't really state that such a new phenomenon in a physical picture exists. So it's just a suspicion and assumption, you see. Okay, yes. Uh, just, you would like to tell uh, us, all of us, not only just me, that Kozarev did nothing that might be replicated, but the Frascati experiment is the first experiment that proved the instantaneous uh, correlations uh, between uh, the center of uh, the body uh, and uh, the local receiver. Is it true? Well, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't I mean... Use the, it doesn't mean that not all the experiments were successful. At least one experiment where Kozarev is his Winston Morstic or Winston Bridge get a signal from the calculated or instantaneous place. It was very firmly reported by him uh, in, uh, I guess it was uh, all the conference first time, uh, but he measured before in a year one in a 19. Uh, 82, but he made measurements in 76, something like this. So it's well tested oh. and uh, was reported. Yes, many people tried, but uh, unsuccessfully, and, and so what? Yes, and I can tell you why. Actually, Alexander Georgiev Parkhomov, uh, maybe he, he is here, he also was discussing this issue. So the detector has a uh, um, uh, resistance, I mean, uh, and so this element, this resistance, it's get uh, heated to very high temperature, like 60 degrees Celsius, and it's very easy to to get a noise instead of signal, so I mean, it really needs a uh, careful replication and independence. So, um, I'm not saying that it's impossible, I'm not saying that it's like bullshit, but it just needs to be re redone more clearly. Yes, we hear a lot of criticism from the Russian Academy of Science uh, that uh, positive experiments are negligible and we should not accept them seriously. But after the Frascati experiment, which replicated the very same physics in the electromagnetic domain, which uh, uh, Nikolai Kozarev uh, discovered in the gravitational domain. This is the same physics. And the electromagnetic experiment were made very carefully and very, uh, uh, how to say, it's, uh, very uh, firmly uh, reported about the, re the results. It can be replicated and can be replicated in any lab, uh, if you like, because everything is published. So and, uh, no much objections. Uh, still, it, it might be an issue, but uh, I uh, I maintain that uh, uh, Dr. Kozarev was first uh, who made the measurements of instantaneous communications for the gravitational uh, fields distributions. So uh, we'll see what uh, how the local physics will develop. And uh, Dr. Abrava uh, told us that uh, even Newton believed in instantaneous communications. Yes, I agree with him, uh, because uh, he introduced the action at a distance as an instantaneous force, which uh, is gathering all the universe instantaneously. So huge distances in the universe, it will be full collapse of the system if the organization will not get instantaneous relations. It doesn't mean uh, that there is uh, 
theory of relativity, which deals with the finite objects, not with fields, with the finite, the mass integral, the body, the body can't move quicker, uh, faster than light. The field ought to move faster than light, and we are well aware about this phenomenon uh, from uh, superconductors, from uh, superfluid helium, and from even uh, from uh, the magnetic uh, moments of uh, incondensed matter systems. It's also non-local organization of the magnetism, magnetic phenomena, they without dissipation, uh, but they maintain the well-organized distribution of currents and fields in the uh, finite volume uh, size sample. Well, okay, uh, Olga, Olga, uh, please uh, put your microphone and tell us. Okay. Uh, hi. Thank you very much for your great talk. And um, I am not a physicist, so my question is a little bit different. And I'm very sorry that today Galina Sergeyevska is not here. She is a philosopher. And f f from, like, philosopher, a, a philosophic and even... Physics, uh, physics point of view. If uh, the, first of all, uh, simul simultaneity, simultaneous and faster than light is really different. It's still, if it's just faster than light, there is sim it's, uh, there, there are some restrictions. So. Um, <clears throat> And from philosophical point of view, okay, if uh, simultaneous is really possible and there is no restriction on any physical level, then how anything could develop? Maybe there is still some restrictions on some level and this is question why if there is every if uh, uh, simultaneous is possible then everything could come up could happen in the same time and we already disappeared from the life of the universe so probably on the some level there is mm, some restrictions posted and they are very strict because it just development is not possible, no progress. And it's uh, I don't remember who said if God is does not exist, it would be good idea to to think him out, to invent him. So so could you a little bit? It's it's not really a question, but uh, in what what in what. I said is a lot of questions. It's just not one question. Could you just comment a little bit on what I said? Okay. Well, uh, I, back with, with me, I am not a philosopher, so uh, I, I could just give my opinion, okay, on uh, on all this, okay? And I'm sorry, I apologize for this. Um, well, uh, you say that uh, if the if uh, the simultaneity is absolute, then uh, all things mu must uh, be uh, here now. So there is no time. I, I am. Is it true? Is it, it is right? This is your question. Okay. Well, I, I, well, I I don't know because. Uh, uh, simultaneity in uh, in the strict sense of physics uh, um, uh, concerns uh, the the passing of time uh, in different uh, in different reference frames, moving uh, uh, at uniform velocity. Okay, um, uh, and uh, simultane simultaneity in physics, uh, at least in a special relativity, um, uh, does not. Uh, uh, um, is not uh, referred to uh, the whole time, the passing of time, but only to the fact that the time passes at the same uh, rate in every in every reference frame, uh, moving at a different uh, velocity. Okay, but uh, uh, this is uh, per perfectly compatible with the fact that uh, 
in every reference frame, the time uh, goes from the past to the future. Okay, and uh, the, the time has a, um, a thickness in the direction from the past to the future, but it, it is the same uh, for every observer. Okay, I, I don't know if I, I okay, thank you. Have, a reply to to your question to your yes, very interesting I question. I, I kind of could could not could not hear it in your presentation, but now I understand your position. Thank you. Thank you. Well, and uh, again, I, I'd like to add that faster than light, it means not faster than light to move for a particle for an object. I uh, say, uh, any, no one particle. As an object, can't move faster than light. Faster than light, it might be just correlations between difficult, especially uh, uh, in the special organization, with correlations between densities of the special state, like a, a distributed quantum particle. The center of quantum particle can't move faster than light, but the wave function uh, of this particle communicates faster than light. And so uh, we physicists told that there is instantaneous reduction of the wave function. It disappears instantaneously over the world. It appears instantaneously in the world, instantaneously everywhere. But it, it, can't, uh, uh, it can't move itself faster than light. Is uh, how it, we, we just to uh, uh, to talk uh, in our physics or present physics at least. Uh, well, Victor, uh, could you uh, open your camera, Victor Antolich? Uh Yes, please. <coughs> uh, thank, uh, thank you uh, for interesting presentation, uh, and uh, I have uh, a little questions uh, about. Uh, experiment uh, as known uh, any electronics have some uh, inner uh, delays between uh, input and output uh, we, we always need some uh, time which can be uh, very short but uh, never can be zero and uh, if you provide some experiment uh, <laughs> is uh, of course you use some electronics and uh, this uh, makes some limits uh, to uh, maximum velocity uh, value which you can measure <clears throat> so you, you you cannot measure uh, in direct way uh, some instantaneous uh, signal uh, but uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, you, uh, in, in other words, uh, you, you cannot uh, uh, make uh, some difference between instantaneous and uh, some velocity uh, which uh, very fast uh, to be uh, uh, resolved by, by your electronic systems. Uh, uh, which is the uh, basis uh, to uh, state that in Frascati experiment we have instantaneous uh, signals, but uh, not very fast. Uh, faster than light, uh, okay, we, we never uh, speed of light, and we, we can uh, uh, exactly uh, calculate uh, which delay uh, must be, and we can state that uh, this signal is faster than light. Uh, but uh, which is the basis to state that this is an instantaneous signal? Okay. Uh, well, <clears throat> uh, I, I don't know if I have properly understood your question, but uh, um, in the Frascati <coughs> experiment, uh, they uh, also may, made use of the theory, okay, of the, uh, the theory 
uh, that I have shown in, 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 in a small portion in the presentation. Um, uh, obviously, they used uh, uh, real uh, devices to, to measure the, the fields, the intensity, uh, also the timing between the, the, ex the exit of the, electro the electron beam from the pipe and the, the, the measurement of the, of the fields at the sensors, mm -hmm. uh, at the place, uh, at the location of the sensors. And um, this, uh, all this is very, very uh, technical stuff, uh, but uh, if you uh, uh, um, have the, the chance to, to read the, the paper, you will see that they made a lot of uh, uh, checking and tests and uh, on the timing, okay? Um, in order to uh, to be sure that um, also made a very very um, accurate error analysis uh, uh, to be sure that what they measure measured was actually um, real and not uh, um, not uh, an effect due to the due to systematic error and um, something like that. Okay, but the point is that they didn't measure. The, the travel time of a signal through a device, an elect electronic device, but they measured the, the, the peak of the electric field, the expected peak of the electric field at the position of the sensors. And uh, uh, they found that this peak is uh, exactly what, uh, exactly within the experimental errors, obviously, but it was uh, exactly uh, that given by the, the, the formula that I have, show, I have shown in the, in the presentation, namely the formula which gives the, the, the field um, in the direction of the instantaneous present position of the, of the electrons, okay? And, um, but um, so the point is that <clears throat> if uh, uh, the, um, the field is uh, due to the retarded properties of the electrons, uh, uh, taking into account the, the timing, the distances uh, and uh, of the, the sensors from the, the exit, uh, pi, uh, the pipe exit, uh, and the distances uh, of the sensors uh, above the, and below the, the, the beam. If one ta takes into account this timing, um, it turns out that, that uh, the, the, um, the field measured uh, at the sensor places should have been equal to zero because uh, um, the field had not the time to go from the, the pipe uh, exit to the sensors if uh, the field were related to the retarded properties of the, the electrons, okay? And uh, so um, what they found is... Uh, um, um, in some sense, uh, uh, strictly uh, related to the theory, okay, to the linear Vickert potentials, okay, and uh, um, this is, the, I think, this is the, the point, uh, the, the, um, the strength of the of the results, okay. Obviously, I am I agree with the, uh, some of you uh, in their uh, previous uh, comments. Um, we need further uh, experiments, okay? Uh, because uh, um, with, with the possible variant, uh, se uh, different setups, okay? Um, for instance, I am aware of uh, um, a proposal made by uh, uh, Igor in, in his publication with Blinov, if, uh, if I am not wrong, of 2018. And uh, um, Igor proposed uh, um, uh, to, uh, to set, to, to place um, uh, an absorber between uh, the pipe exit and uh, the sensors. Uh, so uh, proposed a, vari a variant of the Frascati experiment to see if uh, the sensors were able to, uh, to measure the field, even if the electrons were absorbed by the, the, the barrier, okay? Uh, so I, I think that the, the, the main, uh, the, the, how can I say, the, uh, um, the future is to, uh, to try uh, 
uh, again and again experiments to repeat these experiments, uh, propose uh, uh, variants of these experiments. Uh, I am aware that uh, my uh, thought experiment, that of the shrinking dipole, uh, probably is, uh, for, uh, is probably the, 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 the most uh, difficult one to implement experimentally, okay? But I think that uh, all, of, all, all of us can think of uh, possible uh, proposal to, to test every aspect of this problem, okay? Thank you very much. Thank you. Olga, please. Uh, the second question is why physicists, uh, physicists allow to exist um, quantum um, distribution field that can appear and disappear in a moment, uh, but uh, uh, physicists don't allow to exist uh, uh, Coulomb fields that can't um, disappear momently. <laughs> For, uh, it's a special philosophical um, uh, forbid. forbid forbidden. Okay. You know, Well, uh, I agree with you. <laughs> I, I, I have the same, uh, the same uh, opinion. Uh, it seems that uh, physicists are divided by, in two uh, main groups. One who study quantum phenomena, who are uh, used to every, uh, every uh, strange things, okay? And accept, uh, accept them without a problem. And then the other <laughs> who study uh, more classical physics and uh, um, does, uh, do not accept anything strange or uh, uh, anything that uh, goes against uh, the received view, uh, mainly in, in particular the, the fact that nothing can, uh, um, not, not uh, particle, not uh, information, uh, not field can move faster than light. I agree with you. Uh, I, I, my, my opinion, my, my vision of, of the situation in physics is, is similar to, to that, uh, to, to yours. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, well, I ask a question, uh, Giovanna. Uh, did you uh, write a new article related to might be more advanced the experiments or might be your thoughts? Uh, in the uh, continuation of your of the, that last article. Uh, well, um, um, currently no. Uh, I, I I'm not right. I'm not preparing uh, um, uh, anything in this direction. But uh, my my intention, my uh, my will is to uh, probably in the next in the in the, in the, in the very ne uh, next few days or month to try to write to uh, the, the people uh, who performed the Frascati experiment. Uh, I don't uh, I don't know them personally, uh, and I don't know if they they read my paper. Um, and my my idea is to try to 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 write an email, to drop an email to them and uh, uh, asking if uh, they, these people are in, uh, in their plan to, to perform further experiments, if maybe they want uh, to, uh, to take into uh, consideration my uh, thought experiment. And this is what I want to do in the next few days. But uh, in, uh, for the moment, uh, um, I do not have. Uh, I, I'm not thinking on the on the possible uh, experiment to test the the, the shrinking dipole uh, setup. Well, okay. Uh, when you will be ready to publish the next uh, paper, uh, please look at the option uh, with the nature where we have special issue for the locality. Okay. Uh, we look at uh, the non-local world, macroscopic world. Mm -hmm and collect uh, new papers. Uh, if you uh, decide to submit there, I, I might apply for you uh, to drop the fee. 
Of course, it's very high there. But nonetheless, they might uh, might look at the future paper as they call, and if it's really a new progress in the field, they could publish it without. Okay, fear. thank you. Okay, good. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, who else would like to uh, ask uh, a question? Uh, no, no questions at all. No, okay, well, so uh, we uh, uh, already my understanding to just to discuss the topic. If somebody would like to make some comments about the issue, not exactly with the, the talk, but might be uh, a bit around, you are free to go. So uh, I would like to uh, tell uh, Victor Pachiluga about uh, the uh, wide range of the experiments which might be uh, proposed here uh, for non-local uh, measurements to prove that uh, there are macroscopic organizations of matter both in the laboratory and even between laboratories. We have a lot of uh, biological systems we discussed already uh, in uh, our talks. And uh, there are some physical uh, phenomena which also might be, uh, might be proved. Uh, not only just uh, very complicated uh, gravitational experiments, uh, which uh, Dr. Pozarev made, uh, but uh, some experiments in the electromagnetic domain. So your idea that uh, before the system will start to work non-locally, it should be organized first. I agree with it. So if you have two parts and you decided to... Uh, uh, to make in a local system, so it might uh, take some uh, some time or some delay for the organization. But once the connections has been set it up in the non-local system, it starts to perform non-locally and instantaneously in some specific phenomenon which might be studied. So yes, every device a device. Uh, has the lack of delay, but once it started to work, or the system has been organized, it works instantaneously. So any metric organization, like gravitation field, this metric organization, or another metric system, uh, it, this is an uh, instantaneous organization because it has connections, crystal connections, some geometrical connections, and so the idea is how to how to prove that these geometrical connections are instantaneous one, but not uh, uh, have the limitations of the special theory of relativity, which is only for bodies, for the integrals, not for the fields. Hmm? This is a, a, a new options for the experiments. This field matter. Uh, uh... Uh, reg regarding uh, such experiments and uh, uh, also some uh, theoretical uh, approaches, uh, I think that um, we have some uh, uh, problem, uh, which is the next. Uh, if you have some non-local or instantaneous uh, interactions, this means that uh, all things in the universe uh, are connected. and. Uh, you uh, uh, must uh, develop some uh, other kind of resonance uh, or uh, some address uh, Absolutely, principle yes. uh, to select uh, some other systems. Uh, uh, as I uh, try to state in my uh, previous questions, uh, Possibly we cannot uh, experimentally prove uh, such uh, uh, instantaneous instantaneous signals. Uh, first of all, because uh, when we have some non-local system, we cannot speak in about signals. Uh, th this is some paradox. Uh, this is, uh, from my opinion, this is a, is different type 
a different kind of relations. Uh, when we're speaking about uh, velocity, we have uh, one kind of relations, and uh, this kind of relations uh, we uh, well known all, all our mathematics, uh, which we use, uh, can express this this uh, two polar or binary uh, or binary relations. Uh, but uh, non-locality is uh, require a different kind of relations, and uh, <clears throat> we cannot uh, speak in uh, in terms of space, uh, time, which we use for to power uh, relations uh, for that non-locality. Uh, maybe we cannot uh, s speak about some analogous of time and space uh, and, and uh, some dynamics, but, but this is uh, other kind. And uh, uh, maybe uh, non-locality we can prove uh, not in this way. Uh, we, we cannot prove that uh, we have some signal or some interactions with uh, velocity faster than light. In some uh, Laplace way, we, uh, when we have in uh, many orders of uh, faster than light uh, signals. Uh, but uh, if you have uh, non-local, uh, <laughs> we, we, we uh, need to some uh, address uh, principle to select. And uh, if you can uh, display that you uh, test systems, uh, working in such way, we, we can uh, speak that this is uh, non-locality. Yes, you are right. If you have a device to measure non-local phenomena, you have to be sure that this device is involved both in non-local communications and in local ones, which, which are trying to disturb or to distract all uh, big non-local uh, correlations. Therefore, in the regular uh, laboratory experiments, we are mainly are measuring local, local forces, local actions because they, they dominate. Therefore, in order to reveal the very fine non-local cooperation of the detector, we have uh, to get some specific, uh, specific uh, transmitter and specific uh, receiver in order uh, to prove that this organization or this kind of information might be only from that distant receiver and not from local reasons or local forces, which also contribute like a noise uh, in the laboratory. So to bypass the noise, you have uh, get very specific organization of the signal, some kind of modulations or might be uh, vibrations, uh, based on uh, the, uh, the very native organizations of DNK systems. I don't know exactly. But uh, life matter can select it. Uh, ordinary matter sometimes uh, follow the noise, follow the noise in our measurements. Therefore, the best sensor for non-local phenomena are life matter cells. And uh, the similar uh, biocells from the similar t tissue, tissues or uh, structures or some might be uh, the same kind of bacteria if the communication between bacteria uh, should be. When they have some resonance processes between, if uh, there are no resonance uh, communications, it will be all meshed by local temperature, well, uh, local noise, uh, all the stuff which we used to measure uh, for the bodies. The system behaves not as a part of, of a distributed system, but as a local independent energy organization with all the restrictions from uh, the uh, special theory of relativity. This is uh, how to approach uh, this kind of experiments. Uh, to get new data. Yes. And you know better than me uh, how uh, other people are doing the local uh, communication between uh, people or some 
our life matter systems, even these little plants. Well, uh, there are a few a uh, few questions to our uh, lecturer in the chat. Could you, uh, German, could you look at the chat? Okay, okay I'm, I just opened the, the chat window. Uh, a chat, in, in the very bottom there is a chat section, okay, in the yes, bottom. Yes. Uh, some of the questions seems to be in uh, Russian, so I, I can, uh, sorry. Uh, well, uh, oh, oh, this report is excellent, uh, and so on. This is the consent of part mechanics, is partial. Uh, did you find it? Yeah, yeah. in the context of quantum mechanics, spatial, spatial, spatial non locality, and temporal interaction instantaneity stem directly from the property of the phi functions itself. From the one follow phi function of the whole the universes, quantum entities, only charging by <coughs> permanently instant. Instant to fill each other. At any final distance, it's all into the uh, logical intersections, the propositions. Okay. Well, just one more than I like a comment. I do not see uh, questions uh, here. Well, I, so, must, uh, I must confess that I don't, uh, um, one line of research that I will try to pursue in the future is to uh, deepen my knowledge in, uh, in quantum physics, okay? Because uh, my knowledge in quantum physics is, uh, um, is very, uh, uh, how can I say, not particularly in, uh, uh, deep, in, in depth, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, because uh, <clears throat> um, I think that uh, one can study this, uh, all these phenomena or these non-local phenomena uh, by, how can I say, um, uh, attack both sides of the problem, the, the classical one, but also the, the, the quantum one. Um, as I said in, in the very few, uh, few slides, I am not an expert in uh, quantum electrodynamic or in quantum physics, but my, my okay, uh, well, um, my, my, my future prospect is to, to, to deepen this, this, uh, this aspect of the quantum physics in order to, to see a possible connection with the, with the classical uh, static fields, okay? Anyway, uh, our questions in the chat was uh, that, uh, and uh, it's supportive questions that you are trying to introduce non locality into mm -hmm. the classical world or into the Maxwell's physics. And this is a true way if we are expecting in the future mm -hmm. some kind of convergence between quantum physics yeah. and classical physics. Yeah. And there is a criterion uh, for double unification criterion, which called that uh, once uh, gravity will be unified with electricity, mm -hmm. it means that uh, the mass, the mass uh, will be unified. Uh, the mass will be unified with the charge, electric charge. Mm -hmm. The particle will be unified with its field. And so, at the moment, we have very good Newtonian mechanics, but Newtonian mechanics is uh, for for the masses, for the bodies, not for the fields. First, it's all gravitation, for the fields. And we uh, think that fields were created from these bodies as a supplement. Mm -hmm. Quantum mechanics, it's a non-dual physics where uh, we have only field matter. There are no uh, language of particles, point particles like this. There is a uh, language of only distributed fields. Okay. Once we understand that uh, Newtonian particles are also just field integrals, 
and they have a structure, like internal field structure, we could talk about the convergence of, uh, say, at least of gravitation and electrodynamics, because there is a field in gravitation, there is a field in electrodynamics, and these field states are distributions of energy. Distributions of energy could be described in non-local terms of quantum mechanics by distribution of the uh, psi function in uh, quantum mechanics. So uh, in this double unification criteria, which was invented in the mid of last century in France, uh, so uh, the identity between gravitational or mechanical fields and electromagnetic fields, we will live to, I mean, uh, to identity between particle and its field. The physics of the future will be a non-dual one. Non-dual physics where all uh, the energy will be described in the terms of densities, not in the terms of integrals, in the terms of densities. Uh, so in this field physics, it will probably lead uh, to the convergence of particle with its field, like in quantum mechanics. Mm -hmm. And after this, electricity and uh, gravitation also converge into one theory. So the charge might be a uh, convergent side, like uh, mechanical charge is a uh, real charge and uh, electrical charge is a uh, Im imaginary charge. It's also compatible uh, with the uh, uh, Newton of Long Bohr. Uh, so discussions of non-local properties of classical fields is very important for the future convergence of theory of mm -hmm. quantum mechanics and relativistic mechanics. It's a, uh, it's a very strong challenge at the moment, and only later we will overcome it. It will be one unified physics. There will be no uh, division on Newtonian physics, relativistic physics, and, and uh, quantum physics. So there will be only one mechanics of inertial and charged fields. And these mechanics of fields after integration, will uh, give us mechanics of energies and momentum and angular momentum uh, in, in Newtonian terms. That is the idea okay. of the physics. So, uh, guys, who else would like to, uh, uh, to comment uh, the board? If there are no comments, we will give traditionally the last word. Uh, to uh, our lecturer, uh, uh, please you could uh, uh, tell us a few words uh, about uh, your presentation, about your seminar. Uh, and from our side, you hear that you all were very glad uh, to hear you. Uh, it was a very productive discussion in support of your ideas. There were no objections that is important, no strong objections. But if the objections will be in the form of some letter communications, please answer all our uh, guys who will write you emails uh, regarding the uh, regarding your position. In order we uh, get some maybe discussion in the future about your presentation here in our first language at our seminar, and we will be very very glad to see you again once your next paper will be ready. After you will submit it, and it will be approved just to make it a new presentation to us. So you have um, about a few words uh, just to finalize the, your talk, please. Okay. Well, I, I, I need, I want to thank you very much for your uh, kind uh, um, uh, reaction to my, uh, to my uh, presentation, and I appreciate that uh, it uh, uh, sparked uh, uh, such a lively discussion and uh, I want to just uh, simply uh, thank you very much I am uh, uh, I, I am very pleased to have been invited by by you and uh, thank you all very much again okay good so uh, next week uh, we will have uh, uh, the talk of uh, uh, Dr. Aksionov and so we will see uh, we will 
we will see each other uh, next Tuesday at the same time. And so now uh, the seminar is closed. Thank you all the participants uh, for the pleasure uh, we, uh, we talk uh, today. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye Take bye. care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. bye.